name is Oliver. I came from Ukraine, a beautiful country. And I've been working in the sphere of web development for a couple of years. Uh, I started as a uh, freelance contender and then I came here. So now I'm working in the company Sarpa actually beside you. I'm doing a bunch of interesting stuff there. And yeah, actually, we are currently looking for more contenders, especially in the CSS HTML guys. So if you're interested, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> really interesting stuff. So, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, first of all, why do we need CSS conventions? What is CSS conventions? And also, like, what people start thinking about CSS frameworks, what, what's kind of wrong with them? Is there something wrong? And uh, what kind of problems should CSS framework target? Like, what kind of problems do we have in CSS and how can we solve them? And then we will see about some problems and solutions for this. All this stuff, like the uh, algebra in CSS, max, value, conversion, and also then probability, because all these approaches have some good sides, some bad sides, so probably we could combine those into one, which could be really interesting. So, to start with this, why do we need a CSS framework? I mean, a lot of time people were, were like, when I told them about something like conventions or some other style, they told me, hey, Come on, CSS is easy. You just you just have a designer that makes the mocks, then you basically you implement all the mocks with CSS and HTML, and then give the JavaScript guys, and they do all the magic behind it. Well, it's kind of true, and in this case, you just write everything in one file, and you don't need any separation, and you don't need basically anything. But at some point, you just might find out that you you join a bigger company and you work on one project for a longer time and more especially when you join a startup, which is especially which is really fun because then you probably don't have a full-time designer and maintain the same project and you have constant changes because of the change in the business model and so basically you need to add some buttons there, remove the from there, you see that this thing doesn't work, you should replace this and all these complex changes if you write out in one file they could really, really, really lead to some problems. So, what can be done about this? A lot of people start uh, thinking about, yeah, the basic what happens to the normal workflow. Uh, so yeah, if a lot of people they start thinking, talking about, okay, we have this nice really tool which is called CSS frameworks, like Bootstrap or Foundation. Uh, how many of you are working with Bootstrap Foundation? A lot of people. So I'm not like a big I really against them, they're great tools, so please don't get, don't don't question at this talk. But I mean a lot of people like them because they are responsible to the box and they give you a lot of cross browser fixes and you can if you work with SAS you can customize them to whatever extent you want. But and also I mean there are a bunch of like really beautiful design all the themes to present, so you can just pick one of those and for example there's a lot of times I heard my boss tell me, hey, look at this, this is so beautiful, can you just buy this and so you don't need to do anything and we have everything designed and it would be so great. Well, I wish it were like that, but I mean there are some couple of problems. I mean and if you don't trust me, I mean let's trust some real People, so I think like, how many of you have heard about this person? This is this Harry Roberts. He's uh, like really nice uh, CSS architect guys. He's from UK, as far as I know. So he's doing the CSS Wizard new blog. Like definitely check it out. It's really good. And some time ago, uh, he did a really talk in another one. It was called "What is the CSS Framework Anyway?" So that's there's a link to the video I believe. There's slides will be shared so we can find it, but check it out. So what he did is he posted something on Twitter. So he said, okay, why don't you use people's CSS frameworks? What's wrong with them in the right? And he got a lot of replies and they were quite interesting. Because first of all, people said that okay, the frameworks are too bloated, so they give you like a zillion of styles, file styles, and probably your project you won't use even like a couple of them. Sometimes even people just include the whole bootstrap just because of the responsibility. 
So they the outer hand is far, they just use one. This is not really good. Also, they try to be all sex women, it's also not good to accept that. I mean, the general truth of this world is that we have this much resources, and you can either like put them into one thing, so that if two is doing one thing, that is doing is probably good. If you try to accomplish all the things, yeah, you can't really like please all the people at the same time. So other stuff people said that okay, each project is really unique. So how can you just take something which already has style and apply it to every project out there? So it's true, but I mean a lot of you may say that okay, bootstrap and foundation they are really customizable if you're using SAS, you can just restyle everything if you can. But sometimes you mean just for full customization you have this much of configuration variables, you can just customize one small one. <coughs> also, at some point, just find the yourself that you are finding the, finding your way out of the corner that the framework put you into. So this really not very good. Also, other feedbacks that I really developed that was uh, people want to understand that code. And for example, a lot of people are just too lazy, they don't get inside the in depth for the how does this framework work, what kind of how does it implement in uh, popular conventions and patterns. And also, I mean, it makes you deviate from your old style because as developers we usually have our own old style and with your bootstrap and foundation they have their own old style. So the probable if you just include framework into your project, you will have two styles, which is not very good to maintain in the mix. And also, I mean, all we developers are really, we have our ego, we are really proud of our work. And this is what we, what we do from it, because we enjoy writing CSS and we get paid because we write CSS. And the question is, why would we delegate this fun stuff to somebody else? I mean, you think, okay, I, I can do it by myself, I know how to do it better. Sometimes you just have your own opinion on how to implement this better than another one. And you don't quite agree with how they did those guys did. So, you, people are not very happy with it. I mean, maybe there is something really wrong with it. I mean, but what if we just use the wrong word? I mean, because what framework is by definition is uh, some ground structure which we can easily build upon. This is an underlying system and concept of tags, but another definition is of a microbit, which is certain widgets that you can just take a sweet place wherever you need, so you don't need to write anything. And as I always said, these two things are really great tools if they're used for a big purpose. For example, the, what's, I think what Bootstrap and Foundation are great for is for people that really don't want to write CSS, they do, for some people that don't know how to write CSS, they don't bother writing CSS, they don't want to do it, so they just take something, they want to try some prototype out, they just want to test things, and they implement the interface with that. That's an ideal tool, I think. But building your website on top of the existing framework with redefining the styles for customization could really need some trouble. So, but if it's not a framework, what then the framework is? I mean, if you look at the definition. So, third thing is, this framework needs to do all the fun part about our work, like HTML, CSS, decision making, problem solving. Well, it's actually the, what it shouldn't do. Because what it should do is to leave all the fun stuff to us, because we do that. And it should ideally handle all the like boring stuff, pre-processing, compilation, customization, and optimization, browser reloading, and also uh, it should be nice. So in order to write the beautiful code, we need to be also like guided on the way, because so that we don't end up with a lot of mess in our project. So there should be some idea, some kind of conventions how to write all the stuff. Uh, I mean, still this stuff, I mean, how many of you have ever thought, okay, I'll write my own CSS framework? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was there also, but luckily I was, I was really too lazy to start. So, uh, thanks to God that I'm so lazy. Uh, because, I mean, sometimes developers start writing something and they, then they, people start using that and they developers drop support of this project and it's not very good. 
But actually, lately I've started to thinking, uh, do we actually need a CSF frame? Because if you look at the two problems that framework should solve, that I discussed previously, I mean, if you talk to the better plot first point about the building, optimization, the processing, I mean, doesn't it sound familiar? I mean, for example, I started working with this Yeoman for the customization tool, and, but then I started <coughs> to see that I don't understand it, it's too much, it's too bloated, and I don't use everything from it, so I just went um, front and over. I mean, I learned some very basic stuff like how to run, how to download, how to set up the task, and how to run it. But, and the fact is, it's not that <coughs> difficult. I mean, it's, it's really, you can learn it pretty fast, and once you get it, you can set up the environment for your project like, in short time. Uh, so, what about other stuff? I mean, a lot of stuff, uh, how, we can, how we should write our code. Well, it's probably, there are also a lot of people thought about it for a long time, and they came up with a lot of different solutions. I mean, first of all, we have sense, which uh, by itself allows us to separate our code into chunks and to, to use variables to increase, to increase our pain and to improve the usability and stuff. Uh, also, there are different things like object ready CSS, Max, and them. So, first of all, I think a lot of you know what that is. So, it's a lot of modifier methodology. Just shortly talk about it. So the idea is that you have the some sort of component, and then you this component usually is some placeholder for some attributes, and the way you name them is you have the style for block. Then each each element inside this component, you just prefix it with the block name and then double underscore. And also sometimes the block can be displayed differently based on where in your website or web page it's okay. So you have the modifier thing, which can varize a, varize a view of this widget. So and uh, there are also some naming conventions, like for example, uh, you have the site search component, it has a field inside, so you have a site, site search, and the field, the element is referenced by the double underscore in site search. And also it could be, for example, full size, so we have the full modifier. And especially with the SAS 3.3, they did it really easy and really convenient to write the code in the that way. So also have the, the whole chunk for the whole module, so it's pretty cool. Uh, then uh, we have the how they handle the architecture. So how many of you work with Max? Okay. Uh, Smax is deciphered as scalable and modular architecture for CSS, so we can find more on that way. And the whole idea behind Smax uh, is that you uh, separate your styles, uh, separate your style files based on the function that they do. So first of all, we have the base styles, which is uh, like general resets and also on style elements. So the whole idea is that. If element is in base style, then uh, wherever on the web page this element is, it should move this way. So it will change it. It's like the fixed style of this element wherever it is. Uh, then we have layout styles, which are basically uh, the layout elements they divide the page in different, uh, different blocks, different sections, and they hold different models together. Uh, there, there are models. These are the reusable chunks of our code, which you can use like widgets and different pages and different places. Uh, also, we have state rules. They determine how a model will look under different circumstances. Like, okay, this this model is in footer, or this model is like full size, or whatever. And also, we have the theme styles, uh, which handle the uh, basically the skin of our application on the website. So in addition to this operation, they have some uh, basic naming conventions, which is kind of uh, familiar. So every layout style you prefix with L. So it's like at least and uh, all the we have a module, and again, like in that naming convention, a module is then has some elements inside the module. You prefix it with the uh, module name, and then when you uh, do the style and the state styles, then you just try to use ways that describe the state, for example, is selected or has items or something else. 
So once they applied for that, I tried Snacks some time ago on my first project, and I was really satisfied with how it did. It did a great job. It increased the maintainability of the code a lot, for example, because you have the install separation, and if you need to change the style of one component, you need you know where to find it. And also it decreases the amount of the uh, problems that, that you can run into because of the model preferencing, so the whole namespacing and Naming conflicts really uh, But together with there were some, still some parts that were really ambiguous for me and they, they weren't covered in this uh, architecture convention. So, first question that I like ask myself why would I separate uh, code which I describe, which I write and describe in model into three parts? Basically, model file, state file, and key file. I mean, it means that. If I need to change something, I need to go in three files. For example, if I don't need this model anymore, I need to do the three files, the second one. So that I didn't understand a lot. And for example, also, where is the difference between a model and the other? Especially when you have, for example, a module which has a lot of other models inside. So there is some nesting between models. Especially if we separate the fit skin and the states out of the model into separate files. So I do really did not make a difference. Yes. Yeah, uh, maybe can you give some uh, examples of the difference between model and layout? Uh, yes, a little bit later. I mean, you can find it on the website. Uh, for example, as a difference, uh, at least now, as, as now I understand it, uh, for example, the, uh, the mostly difference from the object-oriented CSS. For example, you separate the content from the from basically the holder of the content. For example, you have the model of user, and user is has avatar, name, and email, right? And model user describes it with this. Avatar, how avatar is looking, uh, for example, has routing borders and has a color of the tags of the email, but how they are positioned relative to each other. It is handled by the layout. So other things each other, or is it one to each other, or is it like a different layout? Yeah. Basically, I'll go through this later, but I mean, it's more, in my answer, it's really biased by what I'm going to talk in the future, but. <laughs> so yeah, this, uh, this is stuff that I found the biggest, and actually, there was more. Uh, with this naming convention, I couldn't really do the main prototyping. For example, if I just, again, if you don't have a designer and you just give it a task and just figure it out. So, how do I do this cost prototyping? How do I do change, change stuff like very quickly and try different versions of design? How do I design the problem? And also, uh, when switching from a project to a project, if you work in multiple, then it may take you some time to remember, okay, well, how do you call this layout? And how do they use it there and where can I find this file? So, visibility across the project is really difficult. But, I mean, you can ask me what the hell do you say? I mean, reusable different projects? And isn't the bad thing about the whole CSS frameworks? Uh, well, actually, I mean, you can actually reuse some of these files across, even across different projects. And that's what the basic idea of the convention called object-oriented CSS or, or, or OCSS. So, talking about OCSS, uh, first time I heard, I read about it in the blog post of this girl, Bosano, who had read this. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what she said that she was at the time working on the redesign and optimization of Twitter code. And what she wrote that the uh, she found out that the, if you just, very simple, she called this pattern, it's a very simple pattern, you have the image and then some piece of content next to it. And then she called this pattern media object. And it's, it's very easy to implement, so you have the wrapper, that is the, just the glittery float, then you have the figure, which is all the image, you just give it the float property, and then inside the body you just give it new block one context. Uh, but apparently this very easy and simple concept, this pattern, just, it's everywhere. And it helps you to solve 
like almost it's almost an every piece of page on Facebook then. And it really shows that if you look just through any website out there, you can find somewhere better on this website. Of course, I mean pattern could be configured a bit from that from the web page to web page, from application to application, but the general idea of this pattern is the same. So that's basically the whole idea behind the object oriented CSS that you, you design not the code, not the design, you don't want the design, but you uh, code the patterns that are used across the design. So for example, as the, as an example of those patterns, I can name, for example, media object and a split view when you have something to that, something to the right. Uh, you have the list, which is should be symmetrical with this, so it should be UL, but uh, it shouldn't look like one, so it should have the reset uh, style. Also, for example, in one list, when you have elements next to each other, uh, just divide it out, so that's one just by technology when you just <coughs> make columns equally distributed across the context. And all these patterns also <coughs> Great CSS, great response, and race also belong to this category. So the main idea is to separate the container from content. So to these containers that are actually the used across almost every website. And by the way, this is the speaking CSS, it's a framework based on our CSS. It's built by Harry Roberts. It's a pretty good project, and honestly, I'm not using CSS framework, but uh, I use this one as the library of patterns. If I need some kind of patterns, I know there and say, okay, does it have this? If it has it, then it's using my project. It's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, object oriented CSS concept is really great, and what it helps us is you have high reusability of your, of your basically one folder with all the abstractions, which you can use across different projects as well. So, you can switch from one project to another project, it's pretty easy. It's, you don't have to spend much time remembering, okay, how do uh, and it gives you possibility to write a product up. For example, if you separate the uh, content from the box that's holding the content from the layout, uh, then, for example, you can try to build, a, as I said here earlier, the user mod model, uh, model next to each other. Then you don't like it, then you just change the layout without changing the model size. You just change the layout in HTML and you have different configuration of this model. So it's pretty cool. I mean, but there is still some unanswered question in this thing, so uh, how do you structure everything else? So it's really nicely described as the, uh, the container, but how do we do the content? So, well, the possible question could be if we combine those two concepts, snacks and object oriented CSS. So we can get the high usability of our code and uh, we can have it cross-project consistency of all CSS and also we have the maintainable structure, separation of place max. And I've been trying this for some time and for example the current way I'm doing it is I separate my whole uh, project into a couple of folders. So inside my CSS I didn't have the uh, I didn't have the base folder for base files in the as it's max. Instead I have context where I have my resets and my arrivals. Uh, then I have the layout folder, which is basically a folder where I keep these uh, abstractions from all object oriented CSS. Uh, then I have modules, where I have all the new module styles from my project, all the widgets and stuff. Uh, I have the Twitter disk, which is a folder where I keep the uh, partials, functions, make sense, all this stuff, nice, nice. Uh, also, remember, if I need to reconfigure something from the third party library, also, there's a bit I also don't have the theme folder, as from Max, and I don't have the separate states folder. Because uh, what I did is you put these themes and the state for a specific model inside the file of the model. And also, if you have some global states like it's floated or uh, is active or something, just which is used across all the models and you can use everywhere, I have separate file for that. I mean, change CSS is a pretty interesting concept, but I think it is also by other robbers, I'm pretty mistaken, but uh, the whole idea is that if you have something that should be refactored, you're just playing around and don't want to bother with this nice thing, then you just put it there, and you just know that the variables there should be refactored in the uh, So, yeah, uh, this is some, uh, but this is all about the ideas about how to structure project on the macro lab. I mean, all the structure of different files, but we still have a problem of 
how do we structure a problem with project on a macro level? I mean, for example, what do we do with nasty models? For example, the, as I said earlier, the, the ambiguity between the layout and model in Snacks is a short story that uh, some models, they don't make sense without this kind of context. So they're kind of dependent on the upper level model. So basically, as the example, uh, let's say that we have the selective viral component, which is basically the input for search. If you start start typing something, it gives you the drop down with, with suggestions. And then you have the selected item which is selected on the bottom. So that's basically the whole uh, about this component. And how do we write it? How do we code this component? Because uh, the one possibility is if you write it with SAS, so it has a selected fire component, then you have inside the field. And then it has the suggestions, which is both the suggestions, but how then you just add certain level nesting? It's, it's a bit ugly. I mean, adding more than two levels of nesting. So, what could be done is uh, I actually remember a <coughs> teach me university about programming, especially about particular kind of programming. Uh, that's, that's basically what the start diving does is how, how to handle the relation between different objects. So, I remember we talked about that encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, association, and composition, and negation. And so, but basically, what happens is that, I mean, <coughs> let's go back. Um, I hope that everyone knows what it is, or maybe not everyone. So, yes, this is going to be Encapsulation is basically you uh, separate. As for example, in band name convention, the module and its elements into its own thing, and it has its own name, and you can refer to it as its own like, element. Inheritance it means that uh, inherited element uses all the has all the properties of the parent object, but it also can have something additional. Uh, polymorphism is how the uh, element depends differently based on where it is or how it was given to it as parameters. And then there are composition and aggregation. These are to for describe the relationship between different objects. And the difference is that uh, these are all, by the way, for the uh, where there is some sort of parent child relationship dependency. And the difference is that in composition, it, uh, if the, this, the coupling is strong, so for example, uh, if you have the human and heart, if human dies, heart dies, right? But sometimes it also depends on the context, because if, for example, designing a game where human heart can be transplanted, the human heart can be in its own end. So in that case, it's aggregation. So composition is where there's a strong coupling, so where the, the child cannot exist without the parent. And the aggregation is when, yeah, there is some relationship, but they can exist as independent entities. So I thought, why not apply this stuff to what I did in CSS? So, if you look at this selective fire thing, I went to the very bottom. We see in the middle has selective fire item. And what selective fire item is, is uh, I don't know. Basically, selective fire item describes this uh, styles for this thing. Because also I added for complexity, for example, you mentioned you, have, you can have different types of items. Selective fire item describes styling for basically name and some extra information. <coughs> Also, there could be different types of it. So we have inheritance here. So the just arrow is inheritance. For example, item A is is round number, and item B is something. So they have do have this entity to so have styling of this entity. Plus, in addition, they will have something else. <coughs> also, uh, this arrow means not uh, round up. Arrow means application. Uh, so. Suggestion list is basically this box of suggestions. And this box has items. Basically, one item suggestion is uh, how do we style the different items in the box. So for example, in this case, you have the order. So, and this box has these items. And also, uh, this item, uh, this suggestion list, it, it, uh, it belongs to the 75 item, which is rather for this field. And this relation is uh, is really strong because this list probably doesn't make sense without the selective fire or component the suggestion list. While this relation is not as strong because you can have this item, the 
the same style pattern inside the suggestion list and outside. So, and it's the same style in this example. So, it's a negation of the case. So, also, I use some sort of naming convention. So, for example, if it's uh, if it is the uh, composition, uh, I prefix it with the name of the parent object here. For example, it was not 75, but 75 object in the SQL suggestions. Also, when I do the inheritance, I uh, write, uh, I prefix the child classes with the parent class. So, for example, this is how I write CSF, and this is basically how it looks in my code. So, I also do this with some sort of small codes on the but yeah, basically this is the just the way I structure the CSS and I wanted to share it. Maybe somebody can give me some hints, maybe somebody will find it useful. But basically this is the end, so don't bother you anymore. So thank you for your attention and see you next time. Because I, I, I have my own CSS folder, 
and all the third party would be somewhere in the other synthesis as folder, probably. But how they combine it from the main file? I mean, still, basically. But yeah, I mean, the, all the files that I use are sometimes to exam and sometimes to change something. So, let's see if I understand it now. Yeah. Uh, what's your opinion on like uh, CSS frameworks like Compass that actually like we include certain uh, modules? Yeah, or... I use Compass. Basically, yeah. I compile my project with Compass and also I include the whole, I usually put the transitions, transforms, because it handles all the different references. So, it's a cool thing, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a part of a framework, it's not doing it, it's a, yeah. But the problem was that the uh, Currently, stable compact does not support 3.3 SAS, yeah. so you can put pre alpha version or something. Yeah. Um, how do you implement uh, design like inheritance for CSS? Uh, inheritance? Uh, what they do is. Yeah, basically, here is inheritance. Uh, so it has a default item, which is basically starting from the name and next information here. And the inherited classes, uh, I call it call them this way, and these are nice property. And the way I use them, uh, let me just surprise the code. So basically what I do is that you have some Uh, yeah. 
When it comes to the point, I, I, it feels to me that sometimes, this is not a question, it's more like a meaning about it. feels to me that sometimes, when people use all these frameworks, it's just because they are trying to use CSS inheritance in a yourself. We use the word class. We create the class and then we extend the class and so on. <laughs> so the class is CSS. It's called the class is No, but when you use it, you use it as a chunk of class. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I think people sometimes they use this framework just because they don't really understand how we know it's CSS. Probably. I mean, you mean the inheritance like the. Uh, uh, because you mean less than more. More, yes. So you have an element, uh, my element, background red. And then you have my element dot uh, border, it has a background red, and it has the border or something. So uh, that's it's like mix styles that are coming from different selectors, and in the end, that's the case for the, uh, the what I use the word called log visit layer. For example, if you have the item order, then it's an order. Yeah. I mean, this way, I mean, I do with this inheritance, what I call inheritance, only in is that when I have something answer that I have, when I need to inherit all the properties of the parent object, but also I need to have something that is not there in parent object. If I want to just meet, uh, if I want to just pick what it is there in parent object, I use what I call, call basically I and the uh, uh, another modified grid, and the way I use it is like this. And that's it, I'll get it. Same direction for the dimensions of the same more properly. I depends on the context. You mentioned before, sorry if the question wasn't asked, but I was asked. You mentioned before that your uh, things you put them with your modules inside your modules, correct? Did you ever need to work on a project that you needed to model with things at the same time? And how easy was it to maintain that? I haven't worked on such a project yet, unfortunately, but I think in that case I would separate it. <laughs> I mean, I had work with that, so I didn't need, I didn't have anything. Yeah. So, you actually combine the layout CSS and the theme layout, where the theme CSS is into one file. Uh, I just file file, file. Well, I just write the, uh, I just don't separate this out of the different files. No. Okay. I just write it inside. Basically, what I write in the, in here, in my model, is uh, everything how it works, how it looks. For example, border values, colors, uh, backgrounds, and stuff. And all the things that I have to handle in layouts is how the opposition is relevant to each other. For example, I want to name it here and a man here and have a better block. So I just do this in layouts so that later I can change it. Shuffle just by changing the layout. Not Well, 
play hard, you know. Well, I hope that it will be not that long because I try to structure it so it can be found somewhere and if I give some insight, it will be, be easy to pick up. But well, the reason is we have that challenge as well in the raising the front end with the team from the developers. The challenge is to find something that you uh, think that transparency across the team will separate so that you can see, for example, uh, Uh, 
it's way easier to do than going to use the media that is as well and because they're because themselves will be the same way for where you use this that's that one of the same way change the yeah. Um I didn't know uh, if you work with uh open with an uh, external designer or if you uh, in the company have a uh, point of um, how easy do you say it is to marry your, um, your CSS framework in uh, what designer actually builds up? Are, and are you able to drive the design in some way? Uh, it depends on the design. Because, for example, the way if I do, uh, it really depends on design. <laughs> I mean, if you can force designer to design on the the uh, response grid on the baseline grid and do everything proportional, just it's very easy to maintain just a couple of variables and your stuff. Sometimes they don't, and then the amount of CSS is going getting bigger. <laughs> but yeah, but do you think, you think this approach also, also helps you in that respect? Or? Yeah, that, because also, for example, if you have the user, we don't have often enough time, so we go to the grid to fill up the time. And uh, when, when I get the design from him, I say, okay, this thing is used here, here, and here, and here. So I can combine this, and it has this, and I can add it from here. And so basically, I built the structure. The reason why I started doing this is that because of nested models. Because uh, how, how do I do build any conventions so that I don't basically confuse myself when I'm in the future? So um, this way, so far, I've mean, tried this about a couple of projects, and it's Relatively easy to switch between one and another, and uh, also it's, yeah, it's kind of helps you. At least helps me to remember where it's all the stuff. Okay. Uh, this is then uh, the new reference to 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 the new I use band name convention data. Basically, what I use from band is the uh, double underscore between the module and the element. Yeah. That's the encapsulation. And the double dash between the module and its modifier. So, yeah. so did you actually use, do you feel that band is not sufficient to achieve what you want to use the combination of actually three? Uh, it wasn't sufficient because how do I handle nested the modules? Again, if two <coughs> modules are really like coupled and they don't, the second one doesn't really make sense for the first one. I mean, first it's giving the naming convention, but the giving the naming that you want it to be somewhere else in the page, and also making another way would be making another level of nesting. So you have like block, then element, then another element in one class, but it's getting bigger and bigger. So you want to get separate elements separate element, that's it. Yeah, but again, yeah, but again, if that block doesn't really make sense for the first one. So how do you that? There should be some sort of something that describes that there's actually a relation between them and the relation could be like there's some relation between them and that's why I add the uh, relation of the parent in the font of the child. I think I think there are no more questions or we can uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs>